everyone. I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The South Recycling Center recently relocated to 5720 East Bannister Road. The center moved due to the new Cerner Office Park that is now under construction. The Recycling Center is open 9 to 5, Wednesday through Saturday. For other recycling locations and a complete list of accepted materials, please visit our website at kcmo.gov and enter Recycling in the search bar. The 2015 through 16 submitted budget is now online and we'd like to know what you think. The overall budget and a line item breakdown are available at the city's open data catalog. Search for open data at kcmo.gov. Residents are also invited to participate in the annual budget hearings as well as a live Twitter budget chat. The budget hearings take place on Saturday, February 21st at the Regional Police Academy at 6885 Northeast Pleasant Valley Road and on Saturday, February 28th at the Southeast Community Center, 4201 East 63rd Street. Both hearings will be held from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. You can also take part in the second annual Twitter budget chat. That's on Tuesday, February 24th from 3 to 4 p.m. Mayor Sly James, City Manager Troy Schulte, City Department Directors and Budget Staff will gather together here at City Hall to respond to the public's questions and comments about the budget live via Twitter. To participate, tweet us using at KCMO and hashtag KCMO Budget. If you're not on Twitter but you don't want to miss the fun, you can also send an email to KCMO Social at KCMO.org. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Kimberly Hess, the director at Lakeside Nature Center with Kansas City Parks and Rec. And right around February 6th, we got a call from Kansas City Animal Control that they were bringing in a red-tailed hawk who had recently flown through the window of a, a gentleman's bedroom, of all things. And uh, the officer brought the hawk in and we did an assessment on her. It's a pretty big female. And she had lacerations on her legs and quite a few broken feathers. So uh, I went out there to the house and uh, sure enough, the, the bedroom was, was destroyed. There was stuff everywhere. There was glass everywhere. And uh, there was a red-tailed hawk laying on the ground. It seemed stunned and, and confused at the time. Um, put my gloves on, picked it up, did a, a brief exam to check for damage. I wasn't real sure if it was gonna be releasable or if there was something wrong with it. And that's when I found that the tail feathers were actually broken. So loaded it up and transported it to the folks at Lakeside Nature Center. Um, let's see, I've been in animal control, animal welfare about eight years. This is the first time I've ever heard of a hawk going through a window. I've worked with plenty of birds that have bounced off windows, but never one that went all the way through it. So in that sense, this was a fairly unique case. What we did is uh, we bandaged the legs and we started her on antibiotics and uh, things like that. And she's actually doing very, very well. The nice thing with animal control is uh, we work with them in a partnership, the two departments, and we get at least one call a day from them that they were going to bring in um, a wild animal. Now we take in all the wild animals such as raccoons, uh, birds of prey, possums, rabbits, things like that, anything that is native to Missouri. And working with animal control is a really great asset for not only us and the animals, but for the public. Because sometimes when these animals are injured, uh, they become frightened and it's sometimes hard for people to uh, collect them up and bring them to Lakeside to be treated. Especially if you're talking an adult female red-tailed hawk, they, they have sharp talons. So animal control does go to these calls, uh, the citizens can call them and they go and they collect the animals and they do a fantastic job keeping the animals safe, bringing them to us for treatment and keeping the public safe. So it's, it's a really nice partnership that we have with Kansas City Animal Control and Parks and Rec. The department is called Animal Health and Public Safety. It's not dog health and public safety or cat health and public safety. We're responsible for the care and, um, and, and of all wildlife and native animals uh, in, in Kansas City. So whenever we pick up any sort of native wildlife, uh, skunks, bats, possums, uh, geese, ducks, um, anything that you might find out in the wild um, that's injured or orphaned, we transport it to the folks here at Lakeside Nature Center so that they can uh, rehabilitate and release it. Uh, an update on the red-tailed hawk. Uh, she did really well. She was a little bit aggressive, so she was a bit of a challenge for us here at the center, but the lacerations on her legs have healed and there's no infection, so we've put her in our flight pens. And from there, she's going to start exercising and building her muscles back up to be re-released in the wild. Now, the one thing we do have to do, since she had so many broken primary feathers, and those are the feathers she uses to fly with, we're going to do to her what's called imping. And imping is a process where we will take feathers and actually attach them to the broken feathers, 
kind of like a feather prosthetics. And with imping the feathers, this allows us to release her into the wild much, much sooner than letting her feathers fall out here and grow back. That would take months. So now we're talking maybe just a week or two and she'll be out flying free again. And that is what we are looking forward to here at Lakeside. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, bringing you news of upcoming shows and sporting events taking place at your city facilities. For fun family entertainment, Discover the Dinosaurs returns to Bartle Hall, February 20th through February 22nd. Explore the mystery of prehistoric life in an environment of learning, amazement, and fun. Discover the Dinosaurs is a unique hands-on exhibit that consists of up to 40 moving and replica museum quality dinosaurs that gives you the opportunity to actually get close and touch the dinosaurs. Beyond the exhibit, additional fun activities are available for kids of all ages, which makes spending the day with the dinosaurs a great experience for the entire family. For ticket information, go to discoverthedinosaurs.com. The 2015 Greater Kansas City International Auto Show will be at Bartle Hall March 4th through the 8th with over 500 new cars, trucks, SUVs, crossovers, and minivans. Imagine yourself behind the wheel of a fuel-sipping hybrid, the highest of the luxury market, or rugged, hard-working trucks. You will be impressed with the latest models and technical achievements from the best of the automotive industry. There's no better spot to comparison shop than the Kansas City Auto Show. For more information, visit KansasCityAutoShow.com. The original Kansas City Home Show returns to Bartle Hall March 20th through the 22nd. A Kansas City tradition for 67 years, the Home Show, together with the KC Lawn and Garden Show, present new opportunities and choices for homeowners to get a jump on spring projects. Meet Chip and Joanna Gaines from HGTV's hit, Fixer Upper. They will be presenting on the main stage on Saturday, March 21st, 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. and Sunday, March 22nd, 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. To learn about more events taking place at Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. Hello, I'm Roosevelt Lash from Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Uh, we're here at Southeast Community Center to talk about our healthier snack options. Uh, if you come out to our community centers, any of our 10 community centers, uh, before you might have saw vending machines, now we have healthier options that are offered by our staff. Uh, we'd love to get input on those options. We've gotten a lot of input already. We've done surveys to figure out what people want. We have granola bars, we have protein bars, we have fruit snacks, and water, diet soda, all those kind of things if you're enjoying them. So, uh, stop into a community center, feel free to ask the staff about what we have to offer and what would you like to see as well. Uh, with the vending machines, it's very impersonal. You put your money in and it spits your money out, spits your item out, but we don't have any say or any control over it. Uh, with our staff offering concessions, there's a chance for our staff to interact with people, to talk with them, figure out what they like it, what they would like to purchase, uh, why they're there, all those kind of things. Uh, we also have a lot more control over what we offer as opposed to what's in the vending machines. So we're able to offer healthier items that we purchase ourselves. We're actually in a partnership right now with the Kansas City Health Department um, and the uh, Missouri University Extension. They are, we're working on a uh, Eat Smart in the Parks program, which is a program that um, tries to advocate for healthier food items that are in our state parks and that are city parks. Um, so we've been working with our health department to gather surveys, or with NU Extension to gather surveys, and analyze that data. Uh, to go out there and uh, put some of these options in place. So that's kind of where it started. We knew we wanted to make this change for a while, and it just happened at the right time that they had a grant and they wanted to partner with us. So we've been partnering with them ever since, and it's been really good. It's been really good for us. All right, so for help or information about our healthier options or to learn more about our parks or our community centers, uh, feel free to visit kcparks.org for more information. 
People involved in car crashes in Kansas City no longer have to go to the police station to get a copy of their accident report. A link to purchase a copy of an accident report is now available online on the police department's website. Just go to kcmo.gov police. An online crash report is 17 bucks and can be paid by credit, debit, or PayPal. Reports obtained in person at a police station still cost $11. The new program provides convenience for those who frequently request crash reports, such as insurance agencies and law firms. They will also speed the process for insurance claims, allowing drivers to get their vehicles fixed faster. The new software will also allow police to collect, file, retrieve, and analyze crash reports more efficiently, which ultimately will create safer roads in our city. The American Jazz Museum's Blue Room in the historic 18th and Vine District was recently named as one of the best jazz venues in the world by Downbeat Magazine, the preeminent jazz magazine. Only two venues were recognized in Kansas and Missouri, and only 163 venues were recognized worldwide. During the month of March, celebrate women in jazz at the American Jazz Museum, featuring jazz vocalist Lisa Henry, storyteller Brother John, and artist Bonnie Brown. They will lead children in art activities focused on women in jazz. For more information, visit AmericanJazzMuseum.org. For more information about these stories, please log on to KCMO.gov and search for The Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of The Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.